What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. You guys know what it is. It's your boy Kevo man. All right, so today we're going to check out Filipinos who made Pinoy proud number two. So yeah, before we get into the video guys, make sure you guys give the video a big thumbs up right now. That helps me a lot. Subscribe if you guys are new. And yeah, let's get into this video, man. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to bend you over, salt poppy, and no one will stop me. You understand me? I'm the Jeez. underdog, bro. You don't even know what you stepped into, bro. You don't even know. <laughs> Salt Pop, you some strong words over there. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank um, God, my team, my brothers, and my dad for training me for this event, and my coach. Salt Poppy is very humble. I'd like um, to thank Happy Punch Promotions and Misfit Boxing, KSI, for giving me this opportunity. Um, I'm very happy to be here. And for um, I'd like to thank Andy Worski as well for taking this fight. Respect. Yeah, respect for that. And um, he can talk as much as he wants. Um, but I let my hands do the talking in the ring. Yes, sir. That's one thing. Very humble. Your final word. Um, I just wish him a speedy recovery. <laughs> oh. I'm a part of kids like my age in the streets. I grew up on watching my Pacquiao. Showboating from Salt Poppy. Salt Poppy has some of the best arms. Jeez. Salt Poppy ain't playing. Salt Poppy making a statement with that one. Social media has been taking over the entertainment industry. It's also starting to make noise in the professional sports industry. Yeah, because we've got YouTubers who think they're boxers now. What a shot! We got YouTubers. At a first glance, anyone could easily assume that this guy's only talents are watching anime and playing video games. This chubby Filipino dude is a living proof that muscles alone don't win fights but real talent and skill. Meet Nathaniel Bustamante, aka Salt Papi. Salt Papi! He was born and raised in Candelaria, Quezon. Quezon. At age 14, he moved to the UK with his family for better opportunities in life. He loved boxing ever since he was a kid because of Manny Pacquiao. He used to engage in street fights for fun in some of his vlogs, which are actually entertaining to watch, but he never really trained seriously. He worked as a nurse in a mental health institution for five years until he struck gold when his fake run challenge on TikTok went viral. His popularity skyrocketed and it didn't stop there because it became even more popular when he started uploading videos of himself pouring salt in the most ridiculous ways you could ever imagine. Salt Poppy Baby Nice This is when he earned his infamous nickname. He made his boxing debut in March of 2022 when he was given the opportunity to match up against the English YouTuber Halal Ham. Hello, Ham. Days before the fight, Salt Poppy's opponent couldn't stop talking smack. You think you're better than boxing than me? <laughs> Bastard, shut up! I'm going to send your Filipino back to China. Bastard, shut up! But come fight night, he made Halal regret everything he said. Oh, love That's you. why you don't disrespect them, man. <laughs> I want to oh, wow. <laughs> see this guy fight again. The internet took notice because it was three full rounds of humiliation. So Yes, sir. So, Papi. And he's delivered emphatically. Mm -hmm. One entertaining Special. performance. But at this point, Salt Papi was only seen as some chubby guy who beat another chubby guy. So he got matched up against a Twitch streamer who was more fit and more arrogant than the first one. I'm not coming in here to like have fun. I'm coming in, like in here to murder you, bro. And <laughs> hey, that's what I'm gonna do, bro. <laughs> Are you, is there an element of surprise that you're worried about with Andy, right? We haven't seen a lot from him. I've lost 10 kg for this fight. I feel more conditioned. I'm going to take him out in first round. Oh, yeah? Really? First round? All right, Salt Poppy in the black. How about Salt Poppy to Southpaw? A la Manny Pacquiao from the Philippines. Salt Poppy has some of the best hands. Jeez, my guy's not playing, bro. Those hands came swinging, bro. Those hands came swinging. Those hands came swinging, my guy. Yes, sir. Poppy making a statement with that one. They've waved it off. The Philippines celebrate. One, two, three. Light them up. And my guy is down just like that, baby. This man was talking about a fight with KSI earlier in the week. 
So much smack, bro, and he get knocked out. So easy. Look at that. And he stayed true to his word. The internet then blew up as Salt Papi violated every ounce of Andy Warski's ego. The matchmakers then wanted to see how Salt Papi reacts when he gets tested. Like, really tested. So they matched him up against an American MMA fighter, Josh Bruckner. On paper, it was looking like our guy didn't have a chance because not only does this guy have a total of 8 professional fights, but he was also bigger at 6 foot 1 and stronger judging by his muscles. Like, come on. Just take a look at the difference. But come fight night. Oh, Poppy got hearts. Josh should be excelling. He's the longer fighter. Should be touching Poppy. From the distance. Oh, knocked him down already. Jeez. What a shot. Man. So Poppy, bro. He may not get up. He's He's over. over. It's all over. One knock on the chin, and my guy is down, bro. My guy is down. That was a Manny so poppy, baby. Inside the guard. You don't see that a lot. And taking advantage of the inside lane and popping him. This was the fight when Salt Poppy gained the respect of everybody, even the pros. Who are the top three creator boxers? Creator boxers. Right. That's, that's what I call them. Salt Poppy. Yes. One? Yes. One? Salt Poppy one? Yes. Technically wise, and like he seems like he understands boxing at a higher level, so I would say Salt Poppy. <sighs> Technically. Also well deserved. He is well so, deserved. Yeah. so entertaining, so good, so sexy. He just, he just so sexy. Like he gets everything. Yeah. He's understanding it, and I think he's going to get better. This win kind of pulled him into the top five pound for pound influencer boxing rankings, along with Jeez. big names such as KSI. My guy is higher than KSI? What? My guy is higher than KSI? Logan Paul is, is number one. Uh, no, no, not Logan. J Jake Paul is number one? Yo, yo is this real? Well, Jake Paul kind of had more fights, I guess. So Jake Paul kind of makes sense. But the people are saying that most of his fights were, you know, rigged. And Jake Paul. Heck, some of them are even scared of him now. Now, well, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, get into all those fights now. Got so you. no more southpaws. You know, people want me to fight Soul Papi. It's not happening. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need to fight happen. Jake Paul. I can't get distracted now. No. Man, it low-key feels good when people fear us. All right. Another Nobody wants to fight you. who should be feared is Dave Bautista. He's Bautista. <laughs> Holy moly. My guy's a monster. He was born and raised in Washington, D.C. by his American mom and Filipino dad who worked as a taxi <coughs> driver and a barber. Isn't he like they Greek? Lived a life of poverty. Half Greek, half Filipino. Their home was located in a place where crime was a daily routine. He once said in an interview that he had witnessed a total of three murders right in front of their house as That's a kid. That's crazy. It didn't take too long for him to adopt a similar lifestyle because as early as 13, he was already stealing cars. By age 17, he started living independently, working as a nightclub bouncer. But that job didn't last long as he was arrested after a fight against two customers. One of them was rendered unconscious. He then got sentenced to one year probation. He then worked as a lifeguard after that. Is that him? At this time, okay. he already had two kids and was struggling to make ends meet. Yeah, tell there me about it. There was one time when he broke down in shame when he had to borrow money from his co-worker just to give his kids some Christmas gifts. His struggles continued until he found bodybuilding and started going all My guy is into ripped. wrestling, which led him to develop a monstrous physique and this didn't happen until he was in his early 30s. What? This was him before. This was him after hitting the gym. What? Dude is almost unrecognizable. Early but 30s, that's what he said working out. A lot of people still doubted him. He tried out in WCW but immediately got rejected and was told by one of their pro wrestlers that he would never make it in the pro scene. Now look when at him now. Door closes, another opens because this led him to get accepted to debut in a much bigger organization, the WWE. Yep. From this point on, his career would snowball as he carried the iconic stage name Batista. He racked up multiple tag team and world title belts and was able to share the ring with legendary wrestlers like Triple H, John Cena, Rey Mysterio, yep. and The Undertaker to name a that few. That tells you never give up on your this dreams. This line of profession is very dangerous. You can never give up. Like, you can never give up. Don't so ever give up. injuries weren't a stranger to him. So he decided to put it on hold and started venturing into acting. As expected, a lot of people doubted him again. But not for long because he was able to secure a role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Where is Gamora? One of the yeah, greatest. I'll do you one better. Who's Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? 
After the Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy, Bautista appeared in multiple highly rated movies such as Blade Runner 2049, Dune, Endgame, yep. Knock at the Cabin, and more. What I like about this dude is he never forgot about his heritage. Yeah. He's a loud and proud Filipino. He is so proud that he got the total of three tattoos representing his Filipino roots. It was always you really just taught to be proud of my heritage. My mom's Greek, my dad's Filipino. Always very yeah, proud of my I, roots. I remember that. He's half Greek, body, half Filipino. Filipino flag and Greek flag, and also another Filipino flag and another Filipino son. Now that's something to be proud of. Another big dude who is a very proud Filipino is Brandon Vera. He was born and raised in Norfolk, Virginia, but he also spent some of his childhood in Tagawayan Quezon under the care of his Filipino dad and stepmom, which explains his fluent Tagalog. Nakakatuwa si Brandon, no? di ba? Pinoy na Pinoy ang galing managalog, mas magaling ka pang managalog sa mga Pilipinong nakatira sa Pilipinas. Nahihirapan pa minsan, minsan mga ibang words. Yung May malalim. ibang words. Oo, Oo pero diretsyo, hindi bulol. Di ba? Ah, thank you. Taga saan ang pamilya mo rito sa Pilipinas? Taga Tagkawayan, Quezon. Mm -mm. And si Ma'am Galing Batangas. He even knows a lot about Philippine history. Uh, Marami ka bang alam sa Pilipinas? A lot. My favorite one is the Barong. Yung Barong Tagalog, pambansang yeah, kasuotan ng mga lalaki. Oo nga. Anong alam mo sa Barong? Saan galing yun? Bakit? Bakit? Saan galing ang Barong? Yeah. Saan ba galing ang Barong? So, the history of the Barong is always told. When the Spanish colonized the Philippines, yeah, yeah. they tried to make us wear clothes. Kasi, di ba, we were savages, not wearing clothes. Uh -oh. So, pinusutan ng damit, and then, uh, laging tago yung mga weapons ng mga Pilipino. Nagtago sila ng mga sandata, okay? Lahat. I guess the way that they fixed the problem was, they came up with a shirt that was see-through. The Barong, Tagalog. Ah, para makita nila kung may tinatago o may daladalang sandata yung mga Pilipino, ang pinasuti lang damit, yung kita yung loob. Mm -hmm. The tattoo on his back is also noticeable. The letters are an ancient Filipino writing system oh, okay. called Baybayin, which reads Bye -bye. hangin, apoy, and tubig. Okay. Ala Pinoy avatar. <laughs> the Pinoy avatar. In wrestling in his high school days, which earned him a four-year athletic scholarship at Old Dominion University. But he would later drop out as he wanted to focus only on wrestling. He enlisted in the U.S. Air Force and joined the wrestling team, but his career would be cut short because he would suffer multiple torn ligaments in his uh. right elbow. This got him medically discharged by the army. Nothing seems to be working in Brandon's favor, but he never gave up. That's the key. He rehabbed his elbow on his own until he was strong enough to enter the Grappler's Quest submission wrestling competitions. He didn't have a coach or a trainer, so this caught the attention of Lloyd Irvin, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and coach, who invited him to train with his MMA school. He later then turned pro and went on to have an eight-fight winning streak while finishing nice. most of his opponents with his signature kicks. Ooh. And devastating headshot, moves. baby. High clinch, watch the knees. Oh, no one heard it. No one heard it. And there was shaking. And it could be over quickly. Though he didn't quite reach the goal to become a champion in the UFC, he did become one in 1FC in a brutal fashion by finishing all of his opponents. Ooh, my guy walked into that one. And let him do what he does. Ooh, that's it. It's all over. You're done. You're done, boy. But he was already 40 at the time, and his age would start catching up as he would lose against Myanmar's online song. In the present day, Brandon Vera had already retired and moved to the Philippines permanently. He also built his own gym called the Alliance Training Center PH to help train more young Filipino MMA talent. Nice, and I like that. Talent, especially in combat sports. Hey, we'll never forget everybody knows Manny. Everybody knows Manny, bro. Everybody. Fought the very best. Historically, great fighter. Yeah. He also has a case for greatest fighter. Pound for pound. I, I believe that. Ever live? I believe that. That's too much power. Too much heart. That's a fact. My guy has a belt in every division. He held a belt in every division. Just so much power of that left. Oh, down goes Thurman! And let me tell you, that was just a quick punch. 
so much power from this little guy. Every time he fights, the country's crime rate drops to 0%. Yeah, everybody He's watching. Master, not only inside, but also outside the ring. Uh, Manny, you have something very kind to say about us yeah, to the people have, yeah. of the Philippines. Okay, hello Philippines. Uh, itong mga kasama ko, uh, hindi sila nakakaintindi ng Tagalog. At uh, uh, akala nila pinapuri ko sila. <laughs> pero sila ay no hindi sila nakakaintindi. Kaya pwede natin silang ibinta. Uh, kaya... Mga kababayan, uh, ito wala to, hindi na kakaintindi. So, okay. <laughs> that, that's Thank extremely moving. Yes, yes. We moved. Yes. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, you never know what he said. We like Thank that. You. We Everyone like loved that. Manny, even the biggest celebrities. But before gaining all that fame, he had to go through a lot of pain yeah. because he was born and raised in General Santos at the time of poverty and war. At age 5, he'd already seen dead and decapitated bodies. Jeez. Military and rebel no shootouts would that. happen just a few meters away from their home, so his family had no choice but to leave and settle in a nearby province called Sarangani. Manny's dad was barely there for them, so his uncle played the role of a father figure. He started training Manny how to box and also taught him how to fish at a very young age to survive. Nice. He joined several amateur boxing competitions and dominated all of them, but he wasn't earning enough because most of what he got was just a bunch of trophies and medals. Life was too hard that it came to a point that Maddie's dad butchered their own dog just to have food on the table. What? This was Maddie's not know that. call, so at age 16, he traveled alone to the city of Manila to become a pro boxer yeah. without letting his mom know because he knew she wouldn't allow him back then. He made the gym his home and slept in the ring every night. In Manny's first professional fight, he had to lie about his age just to get in. He was a malnourished kid, so he put heavy objects in his pocket just to make it into the flyweight division, which explains why he looked significantly smaller than his opponents in his early fights. But despite the handicap, he still went on to dominate yeah. and clean up the whole flyweight division, gaining him a world title belt in the process. It's all about the heart, man. The heart and the will. My guy has so much heart. In spite of this achievement, Manny was still relatively unknown to the world. Nobody knew him to the point that the announcers couldn't even read his name properly. Tale of the tape for Lisanola Ladwaba against Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Now everybody knows his Pacquiao. damn name. But Manny's anonymity would only last until this very night. Boom! He took this fight on only two weeks notice and he is banging Ledwaba right now. Big right hand upstairs and now he's got Ledwaba bleeding badly. The eyes of Ledwaba. That's a TKO victory for the very impressive Manny Pacquiao. I frankly had never heard of him but I've seen it. Everybody him. in the world knows him now. I want to see him again. He would then beat everyone in bantamweight so he had to move up to featherweight where he would earn the nickname Pac-Man as he would Pac -Man. devour most of the Mexican monsters in the division. That power behind the arm. That power is deadly, bro. That power is straight up deadly. That, that's why. It came to a point and he trained so hard. Division, even the lightweight division was willing to fight him. Not even the prime Mayweather. Did Floyd duck Manny Pacquiao? <laughs> yes. I have to believe that Floyd is ducking. So Manny was forced to move up to two weight classes. Manny had to face his idol himself. Oscar de la Hoya. Oh, okay. The size difference was so noticeable that Manny's countrymen got worried about him. There was even a bill that was passed just to stop the fight from happening. The objective is to protect the pride of our nation. Wow. Protect him from a possible debacle that may be detrimental to himself. This country should be a circus. You can see a big man fighting a small man. But the fight still happened and Manny shocked everyone when he completely dominated the much bigger fighter and even made him give up in round number eight. Yeah, and he retired after that, right? Manny De La Hoya retired after this fight. Manny then went down a weight class to visit the lightweight division to put Ricky Hatton to sleep. Ooh! I think Ricky retired after this one as well. Then moved back up to welterweight and proceeded to go on a rampage against bigger opponents. One notable victim was Antonio Margarito, who was oh, arguably the biggest fighter Manny ever faced. What made this matchup interesting was the drama leading up to the yeah, fight. Yeah, talk a lot of Margarito shit. was so arrogant and insulted Manny in multiple ways. 
<laughs> Julian. Who's That's the win? mistake. Pacquiao or Margarito? Margarito. Yeah. All right. No, no. No, this guy. Puto. Es puto Pacquiao. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I remember, I remember this. But just like Salt Papi, Manny did all the talking with his fists. He wasn't ready, man. I don't think about it. Manny's going right for the guard. He's making you open up. He's opening that guard up with so much power. I'm like, oh, once he gets in there, you're done. A vicious beatdown of a guy who outweighed 17 pounds in the ring. Never talk shit again. Pacquiao has his unanimous decision victory. Margarito has a vicious beatdown. I wonder if they're going to talk about the Jeff Horn one. His fifth consecutive conquest. The Jeff Horn fight with Manny. That was that was Manny kind of a... Pacquiao's career is definitely full of interesting fights, but it would take hours if I had to share all of them. For now, let me just give you a perspective on the magnitude of his achievements. Manny is the only 8 weight division world champion yep. and he has held a total of 13 world titles across Facts. all of them. This is a feat no boxer has ever done before. He made it into the box. See, this is why I said Manny is the greatest, man. I don't care what anybody says. Like, Manny is the greatest. What other fighter has done that? No other fighter. They, they need to put it down in the history books. What, the greatest fighter, living fighter currently right now, living, because he's alive. So the greatest living fighter ever has to be Manny Packer. It's not Mayweather. I don't care. Even, even Tyson said it's not Mayweather. And I believe it's not Mayweather. It's Manny Pacquiao, man. ...world fighting bigger guys and retired fighting even bigger guys. He was the people's David against the world's Goliaths. Yeah. And because of his legacy, he became an inspiration to many aspiring young athletes. Yep. If Manny can do it, and we can do it too. one of them was surprisingly a young woman, Heidelin Diaz. She was only nine when she got introduced to weightlifting by her cousins as they used to haul wood, which is a common thing in the provinces to gain extra money. She liked it instantly as she discovered that she was actually stronger than her cousins who turned out to be boys. They also lived a life of poverty as her parents struggled to make ends meet. Heidelin was the fifth child among six, so his dad's income as a tricycle driver and a part-time farmer was barely enough to support them. She had to borrow shoes and uniforms for training and gladly took hand-me-downs. Going to the gym was even a struggle for her because she didn't have money for fare so she had to sit on her friend's lap to avoid paying. Despite all really? the difficulties, wow. Heidelin kept going and her hard work paid off as she got selected as the wildcard entry in the 2008 Summer Olympics in China, making her the first ever female weightlifter to compete for the Philippines in the Olympics. Nice. She was only 17. What? Making it to the Olympics was a good achievement, but winning it all was the ultimate challenge. In Heidelin's case, the gold eluded her for more than a decade and it eluded the whole country for almost a century. 97 years to be exact. Her journey was full of setbacks and crushing defeats, but there was one thing she didn't do. She never gave up. Yes, that's why that's that's why you gotta never give up. Never. Let's do it. Keep free. Liao back into gold Jeez. pedal position. Wow. A new Olympic record with that lift at 126. 126. Pressure now goes back to Heidelin Diaz, who has one lift remaining to become Olympic champion. Heidelin's last successful attempt was 124. And in order to win, she had to break the world record again by adding three more kilos to make it 127, which was Ooh. something she'd never lifted in the past. That That's is almost crazy. 300 pounds. It's like lifting a Batista. <laughs> Okay, up, up, kick, has the kick it up. Now she needs the jerk. Can she recover? There it is. Your Olympic champion in the women's 55. She did it. Category. You did it, my girl. Nice China, the gold. Gold to the Philippines. Heidelin Diaz. She did just that. Heidelin Diaz took home the country's first ever Olympic gold medal. Nice. What a feeling that must be. The anthem of Philippines. The Olympics is next year. I'm kind of excited again. 
must be great hearing your your your, your anthem playing. Like what a feeling that must be. there right. because you know we are not known for our physical gifts we are not the tallest people in the world we are not the strongest either you got heart though sometimes we lose got heart. badly but we never see it as a disadvantage we see it as a challenge to claim victory by improving our skills and talents even further we are filipinos we are a proud race sometimes it makes me wonder why are we always so proud well the answer is simple, because we believe that our country's heart and soul are its people. Yes, sir. I gotta admit, yes, sir. Definitely. Definitely. Definitely heart and soul. 